He is the pride of South Africa. He is one of the top middleweights in the UFC right now. He is Drikus Duplessis joining us from South Africa right now. Hello, Drikus. How are you? My man, good to yourself. I'm doing great. Thank you for joining us um, from South Africa. This might be the first time you've joined us before, uh, multiple times, but I think every time you have been uh, in America. So I think this is the first time, unless I'm mistaken, that you're all the way in South Africa joining us. I appreciate you doing so very, very much. Am I wrong about that? I think you're actually right. Uh, that is pretty coincidental. Yeah, I think you're right. I think every time has been in America. Okay, perfect. Um, I was worried that I was wrong. I don't like to be wrong. All right. Um, lot to talk to you about. First off, let's get the personal stuff out of the way. You had the nose surgery, right? You told us about it. Um, last time we spoke, you were at the airport. You were going back home. You were telling us about the problems. How, how did it go and how are you feeling? Absolutely great. I mean, the, the nose surgery, I can feel such a massive difference from tomorrow. I think, no, on Friday, uh, everything, all the plastic stuff that they used to stabilize everything and the stitches are coming out feeling a massive difference already i can't wait okay and uh can you not train can you not get punched if so for how long as a result of the surgery i know i can train i train i just can't get any shots to the nose for now so i mean we're spending time on like you know making sure the technical stuff's all right you know with the wrestling it's pretty boring because we're doing shadow wrestling which is it absolutely sucks to nobody to, to wrestle. But, uh, you know, in terms of uh, fixing everything, in terms of technique, the, the problems, the little tweaking, all that stuff, it's going perfect. Okay. And uh, they're telling you what in terms of when you could fight, like go through a full training camp, get punched in the face. Like when would be the earliest you could come back? In terms of a fight date, I would say late July to August. Uh, that that'll be ideal, but uh, yeah, I mean, in the next three or four weeks, I'll be one hundred percent ready to take punches like uh, never before, and I guess I'll see the the nose doctor again about two or three years. Okay, yeah, well, maybe a little bit longer than that. And uh, you feel a difference in terms of your breathing? Oh, absolutely! I feel a tremendous difference. The first thing I did when I woke up from the surgery was just inhale, like I was like, oh, that's amazing. Uh, no, uh, absolutely massive difference. I'm feeling absolutely great. Okay, I'm uh, I'm glad to hear that. Um, I'm assuming you watched on Saturday. Did you watch the Israel Desanya fight against Alex Pereira? Oh, of course, of course. It was uh, it was really a spectacular event, and the fight was wow. It was great. Were you expecting that result? Well, a lot of people asked me, and I said, "Well, if you ask me." If I could put my house on it, I would go, this is going to win this fight. I just thought, and I, I even said it within the press conference of my last fight, I think that Izzy had the, the motivation to win this fight. It's, uh, I know he lost three times, but in this one, I just had the feeling that I think he's going to come in super motivated and, and, and win this fight. And listen, he, he didn't have an easy task. He was, in my opinion, I think he, I, I thought he lost the, that first round and he was taking some punishment in that second round. And whether he played possum or not, whether he was telling the truth about that, nobody would really know. But I mean, he set he set Pereira up perfectly for that knockout. And so I'm wondering, when you were watching it, were you rooting for Izzy because you thought maybe there was? Um, and obviously, we're going to get into everything that happened afterwards. But like, did you think it was better for your career if Izzy won the fight? Uh, well, I guess that is something we uh, we discussed. That's something that definitely crossed my mind. That if Easy won this fight, that my chances of the title shot would have been a lot better. But I won't say I was rooting for him or I was rooting for her. I was I was rooting for MMA in that one. I was really looking forward to to this amazing fight. Okay, so uh, he he wins the fight. Um, and then, you know, there's the whole celebration, by the way, just out of curiosity, if I could ask, uh, what did you make of his, uh, post-fight celebration? Well, everything was cool. Like, you know, the arrows, that was, that was, that was so sick. I, when he did that, I was like, oh, my man, like that was super thought out. And it was like right on the money. It was, it was awesome. But, you know, when he went up to the hunter, you know, 
a little kid and, you know, did what he did. You know, you said it was pity, and I guess so. Uh, we are all different people, but I don't think that's something that I generally would would see as a as a the behavior of a champion. It's going down to a kid's level and trying to get a kid back for being a kid and doing stupid things like kids do. You know, but you know, the kid when he did what he did, he didn't he didn't necessarily think about it because he's a kid. But you know, he did he knew exactly what he did. And, I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's all about character and uh, you do you, man. Uh, I guess the flip side to that would be, you know, like Alex never reprimanded his son and, and was kind of showing it off and posting about it. So perhaps it's fair game. I understand where you're coming from. Um, a very hot topic in the sport right now, but um, it was it was it was memorable. And uh, he is quite the showman. And and afterwards, he spoke about you, but never said your name. And I actually now want to go to where I think all this started. Um, at the UFC 285 media day, when you were speaking to reporters, you said this, and I think this is what sparked all of it. Uh, quote, did those belts ever go to Africa? As far as I know, they came to America and New Zealand. I'm going to take a belt to Africa. I'm the African fighter in the UFC. Myself and Cameron, we breathe African air. We wake up in Africa every day. We train in Africa. We're African born. We're African raised. We still reside in Africa. We train out of Africa. That's an African champion. And that's who I'll be. End quote. You said this um, at the UFC 285 media day. And it seemed like the first one that was up was Kamar Usman. And he took issue with your comments and spoke about uh, your comments, responded to you. Did you see Kamaru's response to your um, initial statement about the, the African-born champions? Yes, I absolutely did. I, I, saw, I saw his comments. And, you know, I don't know if there's confusion, but, you know, Kamaru obviously didn't see my interview. It's Kamaru's. You probably didn't see the whole thing. So immediately they went to, Jika said he is more African. Than Kamaru Usman and 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 well the the champions the African born champions. I never said those words, not even close to. I simply stated the fact that I am the only. If if I'm wrong, I would say sorry immediately. Do one of them reside in Africa? And that I did not even mentioned this towards them. I didn't talk about them. I talked about myself. I was not aiming anything at them. I was aiming something at myself, that I will be the first champion that resides in Africa, that will take his belt home to Africa. I never said they weren't African or I was more African. Of course they're African. And I respect them a whole lot. I mean, Usman is one of the greatest to ever do it. Adesanya is one of the greatest middleweights to ever walk this earth. Now, I, I never took anything away from them in that aspect. The only thing I said is that I'm still residing in Africa and I will bring my belt back home to Africa, which is my home where I reside. If we are sending out postcodes and you know, addresses, mine's got to be in Africa. And that's the facts of the matter. I never said they were not African or I was more African or anything in that. Way. I only stated that I want to be and will be the first residing African champion. Do you understand why this may have rubbed some people, including Kamaru and Israel, who we'll get to in a moment the wrong way, given the history between whites and blacks in Africa? Well, to bring color into it for me is the most ridiculous thing ever. That is that is that is the one thing that from this whole thing that really pisses me off, to be honest, is that color brought, was brought into it. I've never even mentioned color because it makes absolutely no difference to me. And to every single person that I know, it makes absolutely no difference. Color is not at it's not the topic at discussion. And if anybody is bringing in color, if is bringing in the fact that I'm white or they are black or any form of, of race in any way, that is, to me, absolutely ridiculous. 
This is a sport. This is fighting. Once you get into a sport, once we get into fighting, sport as a whole is what brings people together. There's no place for race and mentioning of color at all. And that really pisses me off that Kumara Usman is somebody I respect the shoe. And I've trained, I've shared the training match with him. And he went on to say, and he did not say this out of, I don't think he was at all being hateful or anything. He just didn't watch the interview. And he said, somebody said that I said I was more African. I never said those words. I only stated that I'm the one residing in Africa. And all of a sudden, people became, it became this racial thing. And that is absolutely disgusting if, you, if, if I'm being honest. I don't, I don't see any need for that in the sport and, or in any sport for that matter. In the world, this is about two guys fighting each other. The fact that I stay in Africa will be history. The fact that I reside in Africa, won't it be history? Yes, it will. So I don't see anything wrong with saying and stating the facts that I am residing in Africa. And they are not. Not saying they are not African. I'm just saying I'm residing in Africa. I wake up in Africa every day. They don't. Um, for those that may have missed it, this is what Israel had to say about your comment and about you after his win on Saturday. I just want to play this so that we have the proper context. And uh, again, for, for anyone out there who may have missed it, take a look. Look. Fuck, I don't want to give this nigga no clout. I don't whoop that. Uh, I want to whoop his ass so bad. I want to whoop his ass so bad. I want to do it in South Africa or Nigeria. And there's this, uh, but he's got to do work. He's got to do something. Show me something so I can whoop that ass and I can show you history. I'll, I'll remind you because you got to choose your words wisely, wisely when you speak on people that have come before you, people that have paved the way for you. You got to pick your words wisely. You want to try and be a big boy. You want to bamba. You want you with the big boys. You got to choose your words wisely, but I don't want to give him no clout. But if he does work and, and, and I pray to God he keeps winning. I will gladly drag his carcass across South Africa. Wallahi. What's your response to that answer from Izzy? Well, I made my response as well. I said, uh, you won't say my name, so you better not say my name. And that is a very smart move. But ever since... Uh, I also said, enjoy your spectacular victory because it was one spectacular victory. That fight was amazing. His victory was amazing. But enjoy your fight and enjoy your belt and take it home to your home, New Zealand. If that is not his home, I do apologize. But I'm going to have a feeling I don't have to apologize because that is his home. So I never said anything about him, Usman, any other African fighter not being African. I just said, I want to be the first African champion that brings the bell home to Africa because this is my home. So, you know, for him saying that, I mean, <laughs> does he think I'm scared of him? I am not scared of that man. And the fact that he, he, he put some threats out there, obviously he's forgotten because I don't take kindly to threats. Over here, it doesn't work like that. If you want to make threats, come and show me. Come and show me how you drag my coffers around. I would love to see you try. And like I said in that message, UFC Africa is far away from being done. It's, it's probably going to happen next year only. I don't want to wait that long. I will beat him in this year. And after that fight, if he still feels like he has all this power over me and he's like intimid trying to intimidate me, shit, that's good. Then come to Africa next year, and then we'll fight for the belt in a rematch where I'm the champion. Because that fight's not happening this year. And he does not scare me. Not even one little bit. Uh, your full statement on Instagram, just for uh, context, you, you wrote on Monday, so you won't say my name. That's smart. You better not. 
I don't need your airtime at all. I have my whole continent of Africa, all caps behind me. Go enjoy your very spectacular victory at home in New Zealand. UFC Africa is far from being done at least another year. I'll meet you on neutral ground this year. And if you still feel so strongly after facing me and I take your belt home, I'll give you another chance to come and try to face me on all caps, my home soil of Africa. We are Africa. We fear nothing and certainly nobody. My question uh, is, why does this matter so much to you, Drick? It's like, uh, you know, there's someone who's from Canada and they live in the U S or someone who's from Germany and lives in Sweden. Like why? And that goes back to, I think some of the blowback that you may have received for these comments is because of the history, right? There, there is a deep history. You're a white man. He's a black man. And if it feels like a lot of my Africa and you go to your home in New Zealand, and that's what I think is making some people uncomfortable. Why is this such an important theme to keep bringing up in the, uh, you know, the early going, there's no fight here to talk about. There's no booking yet, but in this build up to a potential fight between the two of you. Well, the thing for me is he has a belt that I 100% believe belongs to me. So that is for me the only thing. As for the Africa thing, I said what I said, and I did not speak out of turn. I did not say anything that wasn't factual. I am the fighter that was born in Africa, just like he was, just like Kumara was, just like all of them was. There's no denying that. But I am the only one residing in Africa. And he said he made a fight. I didn't say anything to him. I didn't even mention anything about it. I said, he said, this guy that said this and that, I'll drag his carcass around South Africa. He was obviously speaking about me, and if he wasn't, but I know he was, and that's where it became a thing for me. I don't care about anything else. For me, it's about getting that belt and bringing it home. Whether he is African, of course he's African. Of course he's African. He was born in Nigeria. But does he reside in Africa? No, he doesn't. So I was simply stating the fact that I am the one residing does, did he ever train in, in, in Nigeria? Did he train in Africa? No, he didn't. Do I train in Africa? Yes, I do. So I'm not saying he is not African. I am more African. I'm simply saying that I want to make history for being the first African residing champion. And I don't think it's necessarily fair for you to speak for other people, but your coach on Instagram also posted, and I'm going to paraphrase some of it, just take a, a, an excerpt out here because it was, it was lengthy as well. We will take the belt from you in August this year, and if you are still game, you can come and try to take it back. In South Africa, when the UFC comes to South Africa, as proven, Drikus, quote, the real African with an African passport, end quote, finishes careers like in his last three fights with the UFC with only 8% oxygen. All caps, just imagine what he's going to do to you, the New Zealander, with a full gas tank. There's a lot there, Drick. It's, it's like the real African and you, New Zealander. We we can't shy away that there's there's some undertones here, right? I mean, do you not agree with that? Like he is, a, I, I'm I'm Canadian. Well, well and like I'm you in say, America. I'm still Canadian. Do you, do you feel comfortable with that comment? Like I'm Canadian. I I live in America, but I'm still Canadian. And you know what I mean? Like people can have dual citizenship. He feels very African to me, like you know what I mean. Like what, what, what? Like he's from there. He's got the passport. His family is from there. What's the problem here? Why is this an issue? Uh, like you said, I can't speak for any other people. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, uh, if you look at the comments as well, people are feeling strongly, but I think people are taking this the complete wrong way. I think people are okay. making this an issue that is not there. This is purely two guys fighting. This is me, this is Israel Asanya. For me, there is no, I'm more African, you're more African. I reside in Africa, he doesn't. That is a fact. That is not my opinion, that's not me stating anything. That is a fact. He's African, his heritage is African, of course. Of course. But that does not change the fact that I want to be and will be the first African residing champion. So I see what you are saying, like, oh, it seems like this and that, but go read the comments, go read the comments, and you'll see what people make of this. 
No, it's 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 something I don't condone at all. It's something I don't stand behind at all. That people are making it racial, which is absolutely ridiculous to me. So they are like, yeah, you are white, you can't be African. Well, can you show me my other passport, please? Can you show me that I'm not African? Because that's the only thing I know. Yeah, and I'm sure you're getting some of that, that as well. So like, it, it's probably un- yeah, it's probably uncomfortable on both sides. That's why I just wanted to try to get to the root of why this all started. Um, and I do appreciate you 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 explaining it. Um, and so let me ask you this: obviously, you know, you look at the rankings. If you go down, like you're you're the top guy who he has not fought. This fight makes a lot of sense. You're on a roll. Your your resume is more impressive than Alex's was in the UFC when he got a title shot. Like it's certainly um, not a, it's, it's not a hard case to make for you to get this next shot. Do you think you will fight for the belt next? Do you think you are going to fight Izzy next for that middleweight title? Yeah, I think so. Uh, honestly, oh, wow. so. And, uh, you know, Izzy, I've, like I said, as a fighter, I have all the respect in the world for him. He has done amazing things. I think he might be one of the, if not the greatest middleweight of all time. You know, uh, obviously competing with the great Anderson Silva, that's that's a very hard case to make. But, you know, he's an incredible fighter. But, and for the fact, I shared the match of training with Israel and Sanya as well. But, you know, I like you said, I'm the number one ranked guy that he has not fought. So, you know, unless they are going to do a Whitaker 3, which I do not see happening, and they're definitely not going to do a trilogy match or... I mean, if Adesanya decides to go up to light heavyweight again, I don't see them doing that. So I'm the next guy for, for the belt. That's the only thing that makes sense. And I will be more than happy to accept that fight. And yeah, I, I don't see any other option. Why do you think they won't do the Pereira three fight? You know... Izzy lost to Barrera three times, I think, and he won, yes, and he won the fourth one. But it's only one and one in the UFC, and I don't think they're going to do that, that uh, the trilogy fight with Barrera because as far as the UFC goes, he hasn't really earned that shot to immediately get a rematch. You know, he's, he's done great things, and he did beat Izzy, but, you know, Izzy just shut down that whole avenue. So I don't think they'll do the trilogy match. Uh, Izzy did say in his comment there, he wants you to do some work to show him something, which I think implies like go out there and get another impressive win. What is your response to that? Well, uh, you know, I don't remember the last time that he, that he's the one that I, that I answered to, I answered <laughs> to the UFC. Uh, what if the UFC does say to you, we'd like you to fight someone else? How would you feel about that? You know, at the end of the day, if I beat them now or I beat them when I when I win that belt, it doesn't matter to me. It's uh, it's to me it, it doesn't make any difference. You know, if they, they give me if they give me a number one contender fight, that's that's up to them. But I honestly believe they're going to give me that title fight, and I want that title fight. But you know, if they don't, there's nothing we can do about it. I'll just go out there, I'll fight, I'll win. I don't say no to fights. I'll go out there, I'll do what I have to win another fight. And prove once again that I, I belong in, in in that position. At worst, it does feel like if you're not getting a next, you're one away, right? As long as he's champ, there's 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 not a lot of options out there other than you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have the longest winning streak in the middleweight division, and uh, you know, if you go to my fights, five wins, four finishes, uh, and also, you know, if you look at the route we took to become cha- to 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 the belt. It's 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 pretty similar, and uh, yeah, like you said, you know, if they if they're gonna give me another fight, if they're gonna give me another a number one contender fight, so be it. At the end of the day, we all know that he's probably gonna be the one that decides. He's gonna probably be the one that says, "I'm not gonna fight that guy. I'm gonna fight that guy." So be it. That's out of my control. Well, uh, my control lies with winning sure. whoever they put in front of me. 
Do you think he would say that, that he wouldn't fight you? I don't think so. Uh, I have the uh, really, uh, like, even then I said, like, he's not the type of guy that says no to fight. So I don't, I don't see that. And maybe he thinks like, oh, this is an easy fight. For me. And that's absolutely great for me. Um, well, I, I think stylistically it would be a very fun fight considering both of your backgrounds. I'm not sure if there'd be a ton of takedowns in this fight, uh, but it's a fresh matchup that we haven't seen before. And uh, you are both in your prime, so it would be great to see it. And, uh, and you know, obviously there's going to be some bad blood going into fights. That's Stel's fight. I'm not naive. I just wanted to try to get to the um, the root of, you know, some of the, the statements being made on both sides here. Obviously, I'm talking to you. I haven't talked to him about it just yet. But I appreciate you coming on and, and clarifying. Was there anything else that you wanted to say about any of this before we, we say goodbye? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you just talked about bad blood. There's no bad blood. At the end of the day, the only okay. thing that he has that I want is my belt. And that's, that's it. For me, this whole thing, I think, I got a little out of hand because of miscommunication. Uh, people giving information that we're not true. I see a lot of people saying, how can you say you are more African? That is bullshit. I never said those words. I simply stated that I am the African residing in Africa, which is factual. And I, that's, that's the only message I want to get out there. And no, there's no bad blood. He has what I want. I always say, when I get into that ring, you can be the nicest guy in the world or you can be the biggest asshole in the world. I'm going to go out there and beat you the same way I would either. For me, I'm going out there to do my job and win a fight. And that's it. Appreciate it, Drickus. Thank you so much for coming on. All the best to you. Glad to hear that the surgery went well. And uh, hopefully we'll see you back in there, perhaps in a title fight, if not a number one contender fight very soon. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much for having me. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. There he is, DDP Drickus Duplessis.